Well, thank you very much, uh, Lena, to do this interview. And uh, thank you. I, we know each other al already for a very long time, and I know that you are from a mycological environment because uh, your father and your grandfather were very famous Danish mycologists. Can you tell us something about how you were raised in this mycological environment? Not to put pressure on, I, I, it was, I wasn't very old when my father said that I was in the sixth generation of botanists and mycologists, so don't put any pressure on me. No. Um, I think what fascinated me very early was that I was told about the, the Flora Cassina Danica. So when I was just six, six years or so, when I was thinking about what I should do if the, if the, if the house turned in fire, I should rescue the originals of Flora Gensina Danica. That was my, uh, my priority. Um, but then it fascinated me that uh, he told me the reason why uh, I didn't meet him, uh, my grandfather, but my father told me that the reason he made these meticulous uh, drawings where you could even use a hand lens for more details was that it was good to take on when you were traveling and he was very close to American mycologists and he said we need to know that we are talking about the same species when we use the same name which was not obvious thing there were mistakes made some part of the world you use the same name as we did in US or Europe and but that was for other species because it was a mistake so there he saw the, uh, the drawings as a medium to actually make sure we talk about the right thing um, for my father, I say, um, he, it was the appeal of being, looking, um, training to observe, to differentiate, to like, to appreciate that. It was not that I had to learn all the different species. He didn't learn me anything of species almost. So it was this lo love of Fania. So you, you joined his excursions and, yes. and uh, yeah, okay. So you were in the forest with him all the time. Many, all the time, yeah. okay. See, in the, in the Faroe Island, in Iceland, in Lapland, in all of these areas very early, uh, Atlantic uh, flora, my mother in, in, in mussels and my father in, in uh, mushrooms. Yes. Wow. So, uh, how, how did you take this then further in your career? Um, I had to decide if I should be an archaeologist or mycologist. That was I wanted some, to find things that uh, see something no one else found before. That was my uh, my guidance, and then I choose uh, uh, my mycology, and um, I I actually very early before my master thesis I decided that I really wanted to go on experimental, not just dis descriptive. I was not I thought I should go one step beyond just finding species which are already described and recognized, but I wanted to do experimental part. And the other part is that I was interested in doing basic research with applied perspective. Okay. That's been my guide, and I have followed that very closely in my whole career, that I think basic research is what we need, and, and that, but it's good to have this inspiration for that it could actually be turned into something useful. Besides your, your father, did you have any other role models in mycology? Because you went to university. Which university was that? University of Copenhagen. Yeah. All my degrees, uh, PhD, uh, master, PhD, uh, DSC, whatever, uh, uh, all of them University of Copenhagen. Yeah, and where wonderful does environment. The Nordic mycologists, the European mycologists, forays in Scotland, in England, in I mean, uh, and so uh, sorry to, to hear Oberwinkler died. I mean, such re fantastic person. I don't want to name too many because then I forget others. But they were the grand old man mostly. And then of course Cole being a, a lady and, and some more uh, female came up as well, the next generation. But that's, uh, they, I felt very comfortable and inspired by uh, all these learned men where we shared the love of fungi. Well, I, am, I, I can remember the first time that I saw you was just across, that was the room of Walter Gams. Yeah. And I saw this blonde Danish, I thought, who is this? <laughs> and then I found out that, uh, that you were Lene Lange. So th th that was a very remarkable uh, visit at, at CBS in Barn, I remember. That's where, when I had the work in C uh, Danish Government Institute of Seed Pathology. Yeah, yeah. 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 So you did quite a lot of institutions, I guess. Hmm? Yeah, I... You started there or not? I started, that was in me. I think the most important chapter before 
uh, Danish government uh, institute of Seatology, but actually that I came into working closely with Lawrence uh, Olson in the Zurisporic fungi, doing experiment very much in the school of Emerson. That was where the real, I mean, that's what we learned where Berkeley University, where they really had the experimental take lead in the aquatic fungi. And that was very, very inspiring for me. And there we had the meeting in, in uh, Athens, Georgia, and we had the, in the uh, lower fungi in the lab, uh, and so on. And that, those areas, were, they were very important for me. Um, and the Danish Government Institute of Seed Pathology took the other part, that I'm really, all the time interested in international collaboration. I got that from my father. He told me about how he met with uh, Smith, the renowned Professor Smith here in U in US. Uh, he went to Douglas Lake, Experimental Station, and so on. And it was always international collaboration. Uh, it was not just Danish, it was not just Nordic, but it was international. He went to India, uh, India to work and met with Nero and uh, worked on for a student exchange program after the World War. And I was fascinated by that. So when Paul de Niergaard, the, the renowned alterner, altern, alternaria specialist, uh, monographs on alternaria, yeah. uh, he was the one who recruited me immediately after, um, uh, postdoc, and that uh, I was so appealed to working on this international scene, where I could see you know his philosophy about this about making to mount your your specimens when you were looking at microscope and that was uh, destroying the most important characters the phenotype you should see how the fungus grow in three dimension don't make them flat that was what he told me so all this about growing these difficult species uh, identification difficulties on the seed surface with a mica substrate they really had to show their personality by looking in the, in the binocular microscope. I mean, things like that, I learned so much from him in that. But also this, that you could actually make a whole difference if you could detect whether your seed lot for next, where you should get your food from for your family, if that is actually contaminated or not, could make a difference for um, surviving and storing your yield and so on. So this importance of pathogens and be able to le learn the strategy of them so you can avoid them. And, and that was really my background. How, how long did you stay at the... Uh, eight years. Is, eight years, and then? Yeah. So si six years PhD postdoc in the University of Copenhagen, eight years in, in seed pathology in, and Minister of Foreign Affairs. Then um, the evil forces, the private sector, came up the back stairs and asked if they could recruit me. They wanted for Novo to have a new, new leg, not just enzymes and insulin, but biocontrol of diseases. So using, instead of pesticides, they were very advanced, it was 1986, and they said, could you be help building this uh, new uh, um, entity? Um, and that I had to, s I said yes. And why did I say yes? I, I was, that was a time where uh, immunology came up, that was a time of DNA technology, and I was frustrated with the lack of good equipment in, in academia and university. We did not have the facility at that time in the mid-80s. Uh, it was not there, what I really wanted to do. So that was one thing. The other thing is that this, in, this in industry, Novo, uh, was so international. They told me, oh, you will have colleagues in US and in Japan, and then we have enough, a, a production we are planning in Brazil, and so on. I just felt this kind of, oh, the community of colleagues all over the world that appealed to me. So I said goodbye to, uh, to university for a while, but I said, told myself, I better have an insurance I can come back. So I took a little bit, in outside the office hours, I said I better work on getting my DSc in place, so I'll be qualified for a full professorship back in academia. So they shouldn't get me if so it was. So that was worse. already your uh, yeah. yes, that was my plan. Oh, your plan. Yeah. Okay. And, and I carried through before I was 40. I got my DSc, uh, put 30, uh, 30 papers together or 34 or whatever, and tried to uh, and I got my, the DSc, and that was clever. That was. Yeah. Uh, but I remember that uh, in your Novo Nordisk time, you did also very nice work. And, and uh, also you used your international network, yes. which, which was very important, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm always, I'm, I'm a bit proud of that I only both had uh, children and uh, a private sector career and kept pub publishing, because you've got zero 
uh, I mean, you didn't get any point for making the publication in your private. I mm. mean, it wasn't important at that point in time. So it was extra, but I'm, it made it easier for me to go back again that I have kept on uh, publi uh, publishing all the time. But of course, not publishing to the extent if I had been in in, of course. in, in academia. Yeah. I also know you from uh, my, my uh, travels in, in Thailand and other yeah. countries. Yeah. You were also very active there. Uh, can you tell me something more about that? Um, Thailand came in as one of the uh, a very good collaborator and already from the seed uh, when I was in the um, in the seed uh, pathology institute. Um, it was in Sakarinda's time where I met there. It was only a small apartment in a, in a, in a town hall uh, in in the middle of uh, downtown Bangkok. But they had such a a curiosity and a drive to get into expanding what they were able to do. So we were getting very close, not just seed, seed board, it was more like enzyme technologies. How, and I, I was tra tra uh, training and, and transferring the basics, how you could make enzyme assaying, how you could screen the microbes and how you induce the enzymes and all the basics of that. And then so I felt I became part of family and then when they made an a, a advisory board, I was recruited as a member. Then I became head of uh, in the uh, chairing the international advisory board and so on. So I've kept the relation for very, very many. Uh, and now I'm happy to see, uh, I just went to the Glo uh, Global Bioeconomy Summit in Berlin two months ago. And there, biotech and the minister and uh, the former director of biotech in, in Thailand um, 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 Kanye Wim is now the, the assistant to the Minister wow. in Science and Technology. I didn't know that, hmm. Yeah, and they had a full delegation, and they have gave uh, interventions, and they spoke up in the main reception, and so on. Thailand played a role. Exactly. In, I mean, really saying we already there. We have done that. We can do this bioeconomy, better use of the resources. This is a way forward. And they were, they, I think they are ready to take a, a regional responsibility because they really reached very far. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so yes, it's been a, one of my um, very great um, pillars of collab collaborators. Now we have had a little bit the same the last year in uh, getting closer to um, East Africa and West Africa starting taking in the bioeconomy and see bi fungal, fungi, bacteria and fungal enzymes and bacterial enzymes as instrumental of using their resources better, uh, making um, substitute chemical um, toxic uh, processes with biological processes and dehairing hides and deshading mm -hmm. fish and so on. So a lot of so I think the, for me the next is to get mycology and and enzyme and all what you can do for better use of improved use of, of our resources also collaborate. In and are Africa. you doing this research or uh, this this to to help them also in your new or oh your yeah, new it's not new anymore but you are back in university. Yeah, I have been back since 2006, so yeah. it's already uh, 12 years. Uh, that, that's uh, 12 uh, 12 years I've been back. Uh, and I um, I have been um, full professor at three different universities in, Co in Copenhagen in that time. At the University of Copenhagen, f heading 500 of the biologists, 550 biologists there. And that was a fantastic time. That you can ch I felt I could change the world with these 500 excellent people. But I, to me, the changes in more difficult to change. Uh, it was very slow decision making. I couldn't really get used to it. So uh, when the 10 times I come up with some suggestion for new things we should do, when it was all 10 turned down, then I said, maybe it's time to. Because uh, you, you have not the money which you, you got in no for not disc, of course. Huh? No, and but in at that, in the University of Copenhagen, one year, it was only two years, I, I was managers. I was a manager there. I didn't do much of my own research there. But there was no time for it. But then I came to uh, Albert University as a dean of research and later on director of research of the total whole university. There I started working on in, in my lab again uh, and having building a group. And I built. I had 14 people uh, at the end of uh, of that uh, my time in at Olbo University, and then I was. Uh, I had also been instrumental in building a director of the campus, building a, a new campus for Olbo University in Copenhagen. So we had 
um, how was it? 350 students when I started, and we had 3,500 when I finished, four years, 10 times. We were 70 in the, in the uh, uh, staff, and we were 570 when I finished. So that was very good. But then I wanted to go back, real back to uh, research. My yes. And then I suddenly felt, where are all my colleagues? Because this was the one that I had built was much less experimental. And then someone from Technical University said, can we lure you to come to ours? And I said, I don't want to start over again, a new group. I have done so much funding to have all these 14 people. And then they said, come on, take all of them. So I, all the funders said yes to that they could follow. They had get funding to me and my research. So even though I moved from one university to others, I got all the funny money with me, all the people with me. And then I've had three years in DTU which have been the most productive scientifically in my, in my whole career. I have, I think, 40 peer-reviewed papers in the, the last three years, along with all of the advisory role. I'm, I'm doing a lot of the promotion of, of as you know, in, in trying to get people to see that we are coming into a biological era where we need to use natural way of doing things instead of in synthetic way. We need to use renewables instead of fossil-based. We need, and that's where fungi come in. And I'm telling in all continents of the world, I'm giving lectures about all the different things you have to do and in order that fungi and microbes and enzymes and biological processing and bio-based products and more health by understanding the gut we can make with enzymes, we can make prebiotic feed and food so we get stronger, we don't need so many drugs, we don't need so much health uh, budgets. Uh, emptying uh, um, and because we can eat better by understanding uh, the microbes. So we are in the most fascinating time where what we are doing here, I am all IMA, all of IMC, all the people here, what they are best at and their expertise can become so much useful for what the world really need in transition to be more renewable, saving the planet. Uh, and. Uh, people and environment and profit and everything you need to get the, a, a, more, a, a better future. Yeah. So in my future, what I'm doing now, as in 1st of July, I, I, I'm no longer at with DTU. I have a research collaboration with them that I will have a bench there and so on for the next three years. But I have started my own company and from 1st of July. And I'm not going to make consultancy. I cannot be bored for money, but I will focus I will not have time uh, and spend on administrative meetings, uh, all these uh, tedious things where you have to <laughs> do non-productive things. I will only work on interesting research as a research partner, SME partner to consortia. So I don't have experimental lab myself, but the other partners have, and my ideas can then be implemented by others. And uh, then the advisory role, um, uh, vice chair to, uh, to the EU Commission in bioeconomy. We have a program of 3.7 billion euro we yeah. are, I'm advising on. And then I'm advising to the Danish government, to the Nordic minister, uh, councillor ministers, and then keep some other international. So you're busy, still I'm busy. I'm busy, yeah, but more focused, even more focused. Uh, interesting research with interesting people, mycologists and many other where we need bioinformatics. I'm very close to bioinformatics now. Uh, all the new methods, nice, co I mean, interesting colleagues. But no, I, I only want to be with nice people and good people <laughs> and enthusiastic and the ones who have lots of energy and share the vision of that we should not be only be depressed of what's going on politically and environmentally and climate and so on. We should turn this around as an opportunity for a lot of interesting things to be done, new interesting tasks for the next generation. There's something to live for here. Also for the people who can see growing up in the new generation can see we can do something here. We better try and let's get on the moon. So Sense of urgency. If your father looks back from there to you, what would he say, you think? I feel very much in sync with what he taught me, and I think that he f would say that I well, well done. Uh, well done, but also that, yeah, you carry on the torch. And I do the same mistakes as he did, work too much uh, and, and want too much and too ambitious. And, uh, but um, 
to me it's not a mistake and for him it wasn't a mistake either uh, because there's so much to be done and we are not here just to uh, we are here to have fun while we are doing it but we also have some serious efforts to do uh, because uh, it's needed and we, we are going to have fun and have a lot of nice people uh, we are going to make this together so I'm optimistic but I, I have more this sense of urgency because we are in dire straits uh, in the world and, and I heard with the Mangans uh, in the symposium this morning his, uh, in the first in the food uh, and mycotoxin and, he, and in what he said what the, the, the climate change can do in food security and food safety uh, and, and, and that was a very very serious overview of that there are many things not just positive what fungi can do awesome. but also there will be problems uh, which can endanger both food safety, uh, health, as I can add, and but also food security. So uh, we, it's serious business we're in. Okay, thank you very much for this interview. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> <laughs>